So I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Stephen George, who's professor and director of the Mus Musculoskeletal Research at, uh, at the Duke Clinical Research Institute. And Stephen has taken on the unenviable role of being taskmaster for time. And he has a reputation that you should all be terrified by. <laughs> Are you talking about my speaking or my uh, the other part? So, yeah, yeah, exactly. So the bone I get thrown is I, I do get to provide a 10-minute overview um, of, of the day, and I um, wanted to take a little bit different tact um, and, and provide a broad overview of pain management and um, the understanding of pain. Before I do that, I do want to, um, you know, thank you for the opportunity. It's an honor to be here, and I'm, I'm very much looking forward to, to the day. I'm also watching the clock. Um, here are my financial disclosures. I don't think any of them um, negatively impact um, what I'm going to say. Uh, this is session one, um, and, and Dan already mentioned what the session was about, but just to remind you, this is evidence of effectiveness, and this is also emerging models of care. Um, so that will be the focus. I thought a good way to kick those off was to have some um, content-related background and also some uh, logistics. So. Um, the content related is, and, and Dan alluded to this, and it's hard to do in the time, but I thought this was the easiest way was to use pictures and, um, uh, of, of, and use a layer analogy. But we really have had a fundamental change in our understanding of pain. And, and it always has and always will start with the layer of nociception. Historically, this is how pain has been understood. Um, this has also been used synonymously with pain. And I think really a, a fundamental part of that new understanding is that pain and nociception aren't the same. So when you look at the additional layers, you have the nociception, which is classically the generator. You have the next part, which is the individual experience of pain, and this is what has already been uh, alluded to with, with the quotes, and, and um, this is really the, the unit um, that pain is experienced. And here we, we start to see um, the incredible variation um, that nociception leads to, and, and this is all the different ways that pain is processed in the coping. Um, and the beliefs and the emotional, um, it all can be wrapped up in the, this individual experience layer, um, which introduces the tremendous variability. Um, and then what really has been a focus, um, I think especially in the last you know, five to 10 years, is the impact. And that is something that really has been um, driven home with the opioid crisis. But I think um, there are other ways that pain impacts social roles and vocational roles. And, and, and this is the third and kind of final layer. And I, I even include you know, healthcare seeking in this, in this um, layer of, of the onion. And this, the, uh, when you put all of those together, this is really um, what has led to um, some of these very bold and, and necessary statements about, you know, the, how it does drive health care, how it is a major cause of um, disability, um, key factor in quality of life, and, and, and the burden that really comes not from just one of those layers. It comes from all of those layers. And I think that does um, make, that adds to the complexity. That is the complexity um, that comes with with, with pain. The next part was I just wanted to spend one slide at least using this onion analogy about differentiating between treatment and management because I, I think it's a little bit of semantics, but I do think it's important because the title of this workshop includes pain management. And, and in my mind, uh, the way conceptually I distinguish those is treatment often just is concerned with one of those layers. And, and management, I view as, as a broader approach, something that has um, the potential or directly addresses multiple layers of that onion. Um, and I think we've actually gotten pretty good at, um, there are models for accounting for that individual experience. I think that impact layer is where the challenge really is in, in, um, to uh, healthcare systems and to providers that are looking at uh, delivering care. And certainly putting those all together um, would be uh, a type of, of holy grail um, when you talk about pain management. So I think um, one of the ways to look at this is um, 
when you look at the way pain is uh, typically managed in, in pathways is um, the first contact is and the non-pharmacological are kept you know far apart and, and what has happened in that inter interlude is there's a lot of opportunities for other therapies to be introduced um, including opioids and I think what this workshop is about um, and in this part in particular is uh, being responsive to this emphasis on um, the change in the guidelines that Dan has already mentioned and determining, you know, when is it appropriate to kind of shorten that interlude and to get the non-pharmacological care um, closer to that first contact point. Um, and I think also this is not to say this is a unimodal approach either. I think in keeping with the management, this may include concurrent drug therapies. It may include other um, aspects. And that's, that's the, the management part. Um, and right now, it has largely been done with the blindfolded DART person. Um, it hasn't been done in a cohesive manner. Um, and, and I think that is the next challenge, um, in addition to shortening that opportunity for other therapies, um, to determine how those are going to be organized and how those are going to be structured so that it makes sense um, for the provider and, and most importantly, uh, the patient. So as we go into the session itself, these are some questions that um, are related to the objectives and should be fairly apparent. But you know, what is the evidence? We're going to have a great presentation um, on that. Um, who should get it? When should it be delivered? Um, is early always the right way to go? Or are there, uh, are there other times um, where delaying um, non-pharmacological treatments make sense? And then um, as we funnel into opportunities for discussion, you know, be thinking about uh, what are some specific future research priorities that could be identified. We've already had a good kickoff of that with um, the first presentation. From, um, how can we better guide pain education for providers today? Um, the, the goal is to transition this into um, some consideration for education. So be, be having that in the back of your mind that no doubt is a, a large um, part of the problem. And, and we've already heard some um, testimony to that. And then I think also be thinking about um, ways to inform uh, future policies on, on care delivery. So to the logistics part um, that Dan Hardy um, gave, uh, I, my reputation precedes me. I will see this. This is a nice uh, system here. I will be watching that. Um, so I, I do some behavioral research. So typically what I do when it gets to yellow, I'll kind of shift in my seat a little bit. And then when it gets to red, I'll just walk up and stand right next to you. So um, <laughs> if you want my company, I will, I will do that. Most people socially feel obligated when I stand next to them to get off the podium. But we do have some people here with high potential recalcitrants that I, I'm, I'm interested at. I'm looking at one person in particular, perhaps. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so I will try to keep things on time. Um, there will be opportunities for discussion. Tony provided that. Um, make sure you speak into a microphone. And um, there will be a handoff of the moderator. Don't be confused if you see Bob Kearns up here. He has been asked to moderate the Emerging Models session um, because he'll do a better job than I will. So um, most importantly, enjoy the session and um, really look forward to uh, the opportunity. And you'll see me up here introducing folks, which I think I'm supposed to do now. <laughs>